Hi everyone, this is Kosai from Adventures of Kosai. Um, and I'm here with Conan, I'll let him introduce himself. But our video today is going to be our second, what we're going to say annual right now, but what we're trying to do is, uh, before POF comes out, we want to do another State of the Game video. Our last one was really well received, got a lot of likes. And I'll just hand it off to Conan so he can introduce himself. Hello, I'm Conan the Royal Chronicles with, of course, Kosai, with our second State of the Game. With that said, we will be going into everything, including questions we have received, sources, and so forth. So, let's go. I guess we can jump right into it. I mean, the first topic that we wanted to talk about is the stories and their related story zones and, and how it's progressed since the release of HOT. We will try and be as spoiler-free as possible, just in case we have people buying the hot POF package and playing through the game for the first time? Yeah, you don't have to worry, guys. <laughs> We're not going to worry later. Uh, I, actually, uh, let's just touch, touch on the overall storytelling. I, I am really happy of compared to Vanilla. I know, Conan, you played GW1 with me as well. Uh, uh, and I know that re both of us are really excited that they're actually starting to pull from some of their lore backlog. Yeah, with that saying, I would love to see a Cantha, but you know. Yeah, we, anyway. we hope we all get the can We all hope we get the Cantha one day. I think that's a that's a huge topic that you see in a lot of places. Mm -hmm. The fact that they're bringing in their their GW one stuff is nice. I know there's a lot of back and forth on the Reddit threads and the official forums and stuff like that over, you know, how they're doing the story and the actual story itself. But mm -hmm. for those of us that have been playing since launch, I still like and I. And I'll let you speak to this on your own, but I personally feel like we're leaps and bounds ahead of where we were at launch as far as the storytelling aspect. How did you feel like the new the new story and living story and everything went in, in hot? Living this living story or in hot combined? Hot I will say, compared to the living story right now, hot was slightly lack lackluster, but it was good. But it was way better than the vanilla. Uh, but the living story, the current living story, is where it shines. Yeah, I think I'm going to agree with that 100%. I mean, on, on hot release, a lot of us were kind of disappointed with the story. It felt kind of sharp and felt kind of flat. And then they started releasing some of the living story patches. And I think even since before the release of hot, the living story has really been the shining point for the, the actual storytelling mm -hmm. in the game. I'm totally excited to start the new living story. <laughs> And we, and we will get there. Right? We, we, we will talk about POF in a little bit. Um, like I said, we want to try and get this out before yeah. POF release, just so that we had something to look back on as well and what the state of the game was, kind of what our thoughts were going into POF and what they actually did, what they hit on, what they missed on, uh, as far as we're concerned. Right. Um, but we'll hold off on that because I do want to talk about the story zones. I like the fact that the story zones are, uh, are a good way to get some accessories. Uh, especially some of the more wanted accessories. Uh, well, let's say trinkets instead of accessories, so we don't get confused there. Right. But some of the extended trinkets are a lot easier to get, especially you know when you're starting to talk about things like viper gear and things like that. It makes it a lot easier if you can just go farm a zone. Un unfortunately, it is pure farming at, at a point. What do you think about that aspect of the new zones? In my opinion, compared to raids, since I'm really starting to push out raiding. I'm later in the topic we'll talk about that but uh compared to rating this is a lot more simpler but a little more boring but farming is farming so what do we expect yeah i didn't think about it from I that do. aspect i mean it, it makes it accessible right it's it's a grind but it's accessible right. I, I, and it makes it so you can prepare for raise yourself for the high end stuff. the zones themselves I'm, they got kind of repetitive to me I don't know if I would say Ooh, I'm going yeah. back to them unless they give me a specific I purpose. That's going. I mean, I would love for them to give me a purpose in POF to go back to some of those zones. And I mean, we can talk about that a little bit. And that kind of rolls mm -hmm. into the next topic I want to talk about anyway a little bit was kind of like the map currency. Um, how are you How are going to keep them relevant? And I think the living world uh, maps did a little bit better job than the hot maps as far as mm. making it to where you don't need a right. massive amount of people to get the map the map currency um you know thinking about things like ds right if i want to go buy some stuff that i can only get with crystalline i'm gonna be you know out of luck if 
nobody's in yeah, DS you're right. Totally right about after that. the release of POF. And I think that something has to draw people there because, I mean, most of the, I say, mo no, all of them, all of the hot related uh, legendaries. Mm -hmm. need well, like, for example, some kind of currency from those men. Endover, Precursor, or Eureka. Any of them, actually. Yeah, Eureka and Endeavor are. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, because I'm at. The, those are relatively easy. The, the second round of uh, uh, HOT getting to the Precursor is relatively easy. It's tedious. It's time-consuming, but it's relatively easy because it's just a mat sink. The part I was talking about that actually needed the hot right. materials were um, after that. The post-precursor pieces right. that you actually have to start using the Mystic Forge for and stuff like that. Because I think you still need like the There's map reason why I'm and stuff like that from right that now. at that point. So. For Path of Fire? Other than that though, I mean the story zones came out relatively good. I mean there were good places to mm -hmm. be for the story. They tied in really well to the different story arcs that we were at. I just think after that, some of them weren't as interesting uh, and intriguing to go back to. You know, like, you know, I, I, I play know. DS still more than any of the other maps or things like TD, and and some of that mm -hmm. might have to do with the fact that there is actual things to go and grab in there right. with uh, using those things because of the map currency, and it might be you know like because of rating, I don't go into the other maps as much as other people do just to get those items that I, I'm getting through rating. How do you feel about the maps? Are you Do you feel like you're in those? Uh, if you want me to go on my least liked map, I would have to say TD, but outside that, you kind of touch hit the nail that. But what's going to draw me? New things like, I don't know, skins would probably draw me if they add the tough little skins that are like 400, 500 gold in the trading post right now. Like Light Word Battle Staff, for example. If they had that as just the skin collection, not the item in one of the zones, that would be. That would really drag me back just to farm for it. Because to me, there isn't that much re replay replayability in those. Yeah. If you had, and that's, that's the biggest part for, for me. Like, cause like, and now that I've done the collections that I needed mm -hmm. to do in there, I kind of feel like there's I agree. really no reason for me to go back to them. The footage in the background of this video is going to be of us pro farming leather, probably in Lake Dork, but that's yep. just because it's yep. the leather farm well, is the best place to yeah, do it right now. Farms. Which, I mean, we can kind of roll that in a little bit to the next topic. Mm -hmm. uh, I, last time we did discuss the economy and where it was going. I feel that it's in a lot better place than it was the last time, but I mean, they did introduce. The leather farm, like we talked about, it which I mean, leather is still pretty high. I, I still do think it needs a. I still do think leather needs mm, recipe, recipe adjustments, adjustments not so just helpful. forms in the game. I mean, like, I still have to try and be some certain gear. Like, I still need to gear out the power alley. Having leather prices reduced, like that, a little easier. But. And since we're on the topic of economy, what do you think of what they just announced? for POF. Like, they will not... Okay, so for example, I think one of the ones they mentioned was flax. So at the release of POF, uh -huh. things like flax, this time, and it's not going to be flax, I'm using flax as an example. So what they're doing is, so take a... Imagine that at the beginning of HOT, mm -hmm. you wouldn't have been able to deposit flax. POF, you could deposit... I mean, sorry, at the release of HOT, you could deposit flax. Mm -hmm. My not question okay. is, if they would have done it where you couldn't, like, because that, that's what they're doing in POF. So they're going to introduce a new items and stuff like that. Of course. Right. Probably one of those new gears or something. They like won't that. be depositable at first. They said for a few months they're going to leave it to where you can't deposit them to stimulate people to put them on the marketplace. Right. I remember to drop the prices that. down because flax was pretty expensive when hot initially released. What do you think Pro of that? Uh, it would probably make it more accessible for a few, but it would also make it. Depending on what the item is, could also make it harder to get for some people. Like let's say you just started hot, you don't have a lot of rate money or fractal money, and you want to get this item, how could you get the item? You have to well, that's it. the thing, right? I mean, they want people to put it on the trading post, right? So they want it to drive. They want to drive down the prices. My concern, and one of the things that I've read with, uh, before, is I, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, gonna drop. Or I'm gonna drop it. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna drop it in a bank and just hoard really? it anyway. I'm just not gonna. It won't be hoarded in my material storage, but it'll be hoarded in my bank. So I think okay. the, I think they had 
good intentions. I just don't think it's going to do what they think it will. I, I actually yeah, I actually that. think they're going to get more people buying bank tabs than you're going to see people putting it on the, the market. I can see that. Especially since they came out and said, don't worry, we're going to put this. And they did it ahead of time, so like, we know that they're going to make it the possible in the future. And yeah. So, I mean, those of us with additional bank tabs right now are, are just like, going to stick it in the bank. Like, right, and then when the prices go up, either sell or just continue hoarding. Ex- just, exactly. Or it'll, it'll, just, it'll just repeat the cycle. It did just delaying the cycle unless they really feel like unless they feel like because of the fact that because of the fact that they're delaying it a little bit that people are going to have the ability to get it a little bit because some people will put it on training booth. of course well everyone would do that There's but i don't think that's going to be any different than the people that would have put flax on the training post <laughs> honestly right. I, I mean the, I the people see. that are gonna, the hoarders will hoard one way i mean it's we'll find a way to hoard stuff yep looking at you my death of rose in my bank for example, <laughs> um, more than that. Is there anything else you want to touch on the economy? Because honestly, I, I haven't really had a problem uh, with anything lately on the economy. Everything kind of uh, no. settled. Oh, outside me. weather. What, do you think we missed anything on the economy, or are we free to move on to the next one? Now that we uh, finished the economy conversation, I kind of want to roll right into one of the largest influences on the economy, <laughs> um, and the, and that is the legendaries. And I kind of want to touch on them from two different aspects. So let's let's start with the newest piece that we got in game. Trinket. Let's start with the trinket. Um, what do you think about it? Uh, outside of how annoying the trinket is to get, it, I guess adds accessibility, but you could just get that just from doing guild missions or other stuff. Look-wise, it's okay. I mean, I like the idea of the look, but I've also heard some criticisms that you can't turn it off and stuff like that. Mm. I am definitely in the camp that I wish we could have some kind of options like we have with shoulders and headpieces to just turn it off. Like, I don't want to see that. Now, I got it on the back piece. I got it on my headpiece. Why can't I have it on that trinket? Would be nice. I have actually stopped myself from making... I have the precursor. I have stopped myself from making the trinket specifically because of the fact that I really would never wear it because I do not like the look of it. Right. It was a grind. Oh god. But it was a grind that came at a good time. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of us were finished with a lot of things. I mean, I mean like it like was seasons and all that stuff. The achievements. Yeah. Well, some achievements, because I know some of them require 100% of them. I mean, honestly, it gave me something to do. The one I really didn't like, the only one I really didn't like was um, the Draconis Mons one. Because of how grindy it was to just go back and do all those hearts every day. The one I hated about the trinket is probably going to be the Mursat tablets. So that wasn't bad. That was open a quick Delphi guide and be done with it. Really? Yeah, there's, there's a Delphi guide on it. You can just go get all of them. Because you're talking about the Mursat tablets in Amber Bay, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, go grab the Delphi guide and be done with it. You'll be done with it in like 15 minutes. Yeah, but I'm also working on Neutronics Mons, like you said. I'm with you on that. I'm going to save my la- uh, weapons for last. Probably a good idea. The, uh, I, I actually like where armor's at in the game right now. They just came out with, you know, the, the World v. World and the PvP versions of it. Um, because of the fact that you don't get the visuals of the raid armor, I feel like they did a good job in making it feel like the raid armor still has a little bit of prestige comparatively, compared yeah, to the, I agree. the World v. World and the SPVP. It's probably something that I'm going to end up working long term to get the leather set that I rarely use in World v. World because I actually do like the legend, the, I like the World v. World look on Legendary uh, Leather a little bit better than I like the um, the raid look. Yeah, I agree. As far as the way the mechanically armor and trinkets work and back pieces, I n- wish weapons worked that way as well. It would be very satisfactory. I mean, I know Agnet has came out and said that they're looking at ways to do it and that was after they came out and said that they were worried about what it would do to the economy of sigils. Yeah, that would talk in our talk on our earlier topic we just had about economy. Yeah. I mean, it's such a good functionality on the armor that. Yes. And I know personally, I'm stopping myself. Like I said, I'm stopping myself from making legendary trinket because of the way it looks. I'm stopping myself from making some of the legendary weapons because I still would have to make sec- uh, secondary weapons anyway uh, because I couldn't reuse them. Right. 
I, I still need a Condi set and a power set, for example. Because of those sigils. Exactly. Now, in the legendary topic, I agree with you. I'm probably going to do the same with my last set in Wo with for Wolf World. In fact, that will be on a later topic, but I am farming Wolf World for the notaries with UF. On legendary, look wise, the prestige, I will hands down agree with you. There's a reason why I'm also working on the right armor myself. But there have been people <laughs> who said, oh, but I prefer the Wolf World one because it's easier. Yeah, some people don't get into PvE as much either, so at least it gives them an option to get the functionality of the armor without getting the prestige armor look. You raise that. I mean, it was like, you know, it was like uh, the Abi armor in, in, in GW1, right? I mean... I still have never gotten that. <laughs> honestly, a lot of us ran it, and it didn't even look like the best armor in the game for a lot of people. Like, for Warriors, for example, I really didn't think it was the best looking set in the game, but we ran it because of the prestige factor. Mm -hmm. well, we keep bringing it up a lot, the, the, the raids and the raid armor we can move right into raids and start talking about raids and i really do think they're really really good content for uh in-game they, they're yes. probably some of the best in-game content we have hands down i have to agree with you and i know the community is completely split on it but i really do feel like they're in a good spot i think that the only issue I have with it is I wish there would be a way to make it a five-man raid. Which would kind of start rolling into the territory of fractals. The way that looks like they're going with fractals anyway because of some of the new challenge mode stuff. Um, but it doesn't give you the same kind of rewards, right? So I, I feel like they still need to fix the whole now I have to go find nine other people to have fun in the game kind of thing. Yeah, I agree with you. That and touching on raids about the LI requirements and pinging and stuff like that for showing that oh you've done your experience when in fact it you could just link a chat code from a website and just say oh you're experienced when I feel that that is one of the downsides of LI and I had this conversation with a, uh, a guildy earlier this week I think one of the bigger downfalls of it too is it really doesn't give you any scope of what experience that guy has. Mm -hmm. That could just be lying outright about the ally thing, but... No, um, that's not what I meant by that. Take me, for example. I had to quit playing raids for a year because of personal reasons. Right. The, I just didn't have the time during that, that, that year. Yeah. I had... I came back with 75-ish ally, but they oh, were yeah. all on the first, you know, six bosses. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So when I was pinging my ally, you know, I was looking like I was experienced, but I was only experienced on the first six bosses. You know, that's right. one of the downsides of it, in my opinion. I mean, I actually do like the, you know, the, I think there needs to be a boss-specific way of pinging. If yeah. they're going to do that. I mean, I don't like that fact anyway. I wish there would be better ways to tell if people were experienced. I agree. In a specific raid, but, I mean, if they're going to do one, I don't like LI for it because it's not it actually it a state of whether or not you're experienced at the boss we're trying exactly. to get. Exactly. And I agree with you. And like, I'm still learning all the raids, as you've already, as I told you before. And I'd love to be welcoming more raids, but I've also noticed that some people are also winging the raids too. Well, a lot of people are winging the raids. Does that guarantee, does that feel like a training run if you win the raid, let's say? How would you define you know real? You know really quickly though. I mean, that's. At the point that the raids are in right now, you know relatively quickly if the people in your group are experienced or not. Yeah, like going off what you said about raids with BG Gorse and how you did it with, un with one food cycle. You know in most groups if you can do it in a few pulls. You know, like if it's an obvious, just like, oh, we got a horrible green circle kind of thing, or oh, if, it's, if it's actually people playing bad. I mean, you'll know that. Yeah. At, at this point, I mean, it's getting to the point where, and I, this is one of the things I like about raids right now, is it's getting to the point where hugging raids is completely possible at this point. You know, before, and I see, I had, I think I had to quit playing raids right around a month or two after Wing Two came out, mm -hmm. something like that. I believe, yeah. It was relatively qu uh, recent. At, well, it was relatively soon after Wing Two came out, but when I came back and started raiding again uh there was uh, even at that point it still was kind of hesitant on whether or not you could successfully r r uh, pug a raid right um enough people have experience i think power creep has come in a little bit because people have been able to uh, between balance patches that they've had and people just knowing 
playing the classes so uh, so much mm -hmm. that, uh, that they've been able to tweak them as much as possible. Like going off that example about the balance patch, like how a, how a county PS can be like, what you call it, DPS, offhand DPS if you want it to be. Yeah, county warrior is really powerful. I'm gonna send something's gonna happen to that, but I'll talk about that in another time. Getting back to the high-end content stuff, the other option right now for us really is, is fractals, right? Mm -hmm. And I know they've already said that they're not gonna touch fractals again. But I would really, really like. Well, sorry. Let me rephrase that. I'm a little confused. I know they. I know they said that they're not going to touch fractals again for POF release. They probably will touch it again during the living story cycles for POF. Uh, is what they said, actually. Which is fine. I'm fine with POF being a content thing because it's not like I'm going to go rush to play a fractal anyway when I've got all this new content to play, right? But I really, really hope that the first one on their list is aquatic because. Oh God! <laughs> don't get me started on aquatic. I'm wondering, do I even need to send it to activate it quicker? But go, going off that topic, skipping Aquatic, because I know we'll go back to that. What about the possible, remember the election at Long Arch? The Abaddon Fractal? For, you know, do you think the possibility of that possibly happening later in POF? Look I actually think you've got a really good shot at seeing that, considering where we're going to be and where the story went. You know, again, staying away from spoilers as much yeah, as possible. Yeah, go further I that. really do think as where they took the story where we're gonna be I think you have a good chance that they might try and tie that in with since since they obviously did some work on it back then to give us a little screen a few screenshots or something like that I think you've got a good shot of that coming and being the next fractal that they release because of that fact you know tie it mm -hmm. into the story a little bit right. give us some background on Abaddon while they're you know, while they're telling this other story, I mean, everybody should know if you've watched any trailer that Balthazar is going to be the, one of the bad guys in POF, right? Right. So that's not a huge, that's not a spoiler. But well, we won't tell. So into where that. where they're going with it with the, with the human gods, I think that'd be a perfect re where, place to say, look, here's your Abaddon fractal, and now you can l learn a little bit more about it. That would be so nice. But back on Aquatic Fractal, they either need to revamp that or. Uh... To figure out how to make underwater slightly enjoyable for that. I wouldn't mind if they did something like they did with, with uh, Capricorn in PvP. That would be. Yeah, you know, they, they took it out and got rid of most of the underwater combat and stuff, and it actually isn't horrible now. I mean, going off that, yeah, I, I remember playing a PvP match in that for PvP posts, and it was actually enjoyable. Outside of challenge modes, which is a completely different topic, but because anyway, I'll talk about that in a second, but. Outside of, fra outside of challenge mode, fractals are in a really good spot right now, except for one thing, and I don't think POF is going to answer as well. I don't think the release of POF is going to answer this. Let me, let, me, let me say that. Those of us that have been playing fractals for a while, we really have no outlet for our relics. Mm -hmm. That's true, and I'm like hoarding them right now. Give me something to spend them with. <laughs> So I'm, I'm hoping once they get back into doing some quality of life things, that's one of the things on their list because it's that would be huge yeah. for the Fractal players. Now, switching to the challenge mode ones. Challenge modes are kind of where raids were when you know I said I when I came back it was hard to do a pug. Right. Um, they're kind of where raids were to where it's almost like and, and you're starting to see some toxicity in in the challenge I mode have and. Seen that. So I'm, I'm kind of wondering if they're watching wh how the community re evolves around five-man challenge mode rate, uh, because ra uh, it's supposed to be raid level content, right? right? Those challenge modes. So I'm starting to wonder if they're looking at that and, and seeing how the community evolves around that to see what they're gonna do if they if and maybe make that decision on if they're gonna allow us some kind of actual five-man raid. Um, because they may game. they may see that they may see that the community was so toxic around a five man team in challenge mode that they may say it's not worth putting it into the game. Uh -huh. um, that's one of the things that worries me. But I mean, there's there are some good players out there who just don't care as much. But when you do have five people, uh, one person's mistakes are going to be magnified compared yes, to yes, exactly. So, I mean, like in 10 man raids, if someone does a mistake, it's like, let's say Karen, you can easily just continue unless it's the kite. Well, you've got guilds out there who are 8 manning it, right? right? So, I mean, we know it's possible to make a few mistakes and, and, and clear raids. I mean, yeah. I mean, look, I've killed, 
uh, with VG for an example. You know, I've killed VG, and let's put it this way, right? We, the range that I've done first split on VG is anywhere, and actually killed him, is anywhere between, you know, 630 and 655 on first split. So, I mean, you've got that leeway a little bit. You can make a few mistakes and still beat it. Exactly. But, but back in your toxic city about fractals, I have yet to see a LFG what you're just what you're saying. But if you've seen it, then they either need to closely observe toxicity and possibly make a workaround for that, or an adjustment. I mean, and I, well, I think it's just the kind of players that are in it right now, right? Because it's the same thing happened with raids when it first came out. Like the only reason I was in raids a lot is because of the group I was in. Mm -hmm. um, had it not been for that, I probably wouldn't have played in the, the way that the community was running itself in, in raids because it was people wanted to get it done, so they only wanted like the best of the best, right? All right. Around. Nowadays, yeah, it's more left, but I agree. With you. It was hard finding a pug group too when 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 they first came out, like all the way into the second wing at least, and then when I came back, it was still pretty hard. Wing four helped that a lot. I think um, or made it like made the well they still do that but the ping and li crap or legendary armor but it's not as I kind of feel like wing I kind of feel like wing 4 actually gave introduced more people to raids because yeah. of the level the level of difficulty on wing 4 felt easier mm -hmm. overall as a wing so I think it introduced a lot more people to raids because mm -hmm. I think people were able to get through it a little bit faster going on that topic I really want to kill Demos but that's another time <laughs> I want that darn glove. But okay. That's... I, I still have yet to get the mace that I want to draw. But, the, um... Oh yeah, that is from Demos, but... Yeah, we can... Oh, cool. The, uh... I mean, honestly, I, we can move on. I mean, we were yeah, talking about this we for a while. we talked about but, that for a very long time. But, I mean, ra I think I think raids are moving into a good place, and we'll kind of see where fractals go with all the challenge modes, because I, I would assume that they're going to continue to add challenge modes. Um, oh, I because agree. I think they're using that as a way to introduce Mystic Coins. Oh god. Yep. <laughs> but, but about that, SPP and Warby World. We did touch about that on the uh, armors and stuff in there, about how they added that. I'm kind of with you though, I'm getting into Warby World every now and then. But it's not like our main gameplay as PvE is for us. I mean, I used to be pretty big into Warby World, you know, you were there with me, but... Mm -hmm. SPVP, I played it for a while too. I just do that for the. Puzzles, I, I actually pretty much only played SPVP so I can unlock the dungeon uh, skins. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Just do an unranked match, get your skins, and there you go. There's your skins. Yup. And so I don't, I'm not going to touch too much on SPVP. I really don't even know what the current state of the community is in, in SPVP, honestly. Uh, I've heard see. mixed reviews about. I've seen some toxic yeah. players on my end, but i also seen some really enjoyable players who, even if they lost, are good sports. But it's a mix. Like you said, Mobile World, the re reward tracks in Mobile World and the PIP system, I actually do like that. I do like a lot of the new changes. I, I actually like gliding. I know a lot of people were pissed off about gliding. The way I look at it is, you know, Mobile World community has been asking for something new to revitalize the thing for probably two years now if they give them something and people bitched yeah I, 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 I was like you can't continually ask anet to give you stuff and then bitch at everything they give you and expect them to continually like work with you I mean, just that's one of the things that kind of annoyed me about that yeah. one um, give it and it was the like first day people were bitching it's not like they didn't even give it a chance it was just like I'm gonna bitch just a bitch right <laughs> And as someone who's played World v. World since pretty much day one, I it's I actually like it. Yeah, I still miss Havocs and roaming, but actually, I think World v. I think gliding in World v. Worlds made that harder to tell you yeah, the truth. Because one of the things that was the death of, of Havoc and in small group play in tier one servers was the fact that you know people were starting to learn the map so well and being able to get across the map so quickly. And now with gliding, it's gonna be even it's gonna amplify that problem. Right. You know, the other, the other issue is that they did some stuff with notifications, at, like swords and stuff like that, that really didn't right. uh, help too much with that either. Yeah. But, I, remember I mean, World v. World is going to be a Zerg Fest for far as I can tell for a while. Unless POF introduces There's gonna be some, some kind of class mechanics that stop it. Yeah, there will be, I'm sensing since I mostly play Warrior, 
Spellbreaker is gonna have something. Soul Beast might have something. Well, I don't know about Soul Beast. Score. The only thing that I would say, like you're you're right about that. Um, but I can definitely see changes happening. Spellbreaker is definitely gonna be like a go-to class if you ask me in World of World, but. The only counterplay to that that I could see coming into the game would maybe be that new barrier system. Mm -hmm. um, that so I, I don't I don't know how that's gonna affect World v World. And honestly, I don't want to speculate too much about how POF POF is gonna affect it. But I mean, honestly, really it's know. in the same state it's been. It's in the same state it's been for two years now. Really, it's it's a Zerg fest that whoever has the most people at a fight is gonna win. Right. Um, yeah, it's not supposed to be like. The game is the game was never supposed to have been any kind of balanced or anything like that. And I'm fine with that. Uh -huh. My my issue is that I wish they would incentivize multiple modes of play. Right. Like, I, you know, I, if I'm if I'm in a, a zerg, I'm getting the most points right now. I'm getting the most pips. You know, uh -huh. like they tried to incentivize you going to a map that's out, man. But, but I'll same. still out I'll still out pip if I'm in the zerg in EB, for example. Mm -hmm. Just karma training if there's no one on the map fighting us or just killing people 24 7 so yeah and going off that i have also done my own share of that today for as i said notaries which i don't know do you think they would add something to notaries for pof or i hope not because i want to spend all my points on the same reason i've been farming notaries just for that too so i can get a few of my because there's a few characters that i really didn't play that often that I want to play some of the new specs for. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons I've been in World of World a lot lately. Yeah, same reason here. I've been trying to hit reset it. Like, I'll probably miss this reset, of course, because POF is this running. Yep, same. And I'll probably not touch anything but POF content for the first three or four days. All right. I'm in the same boat as you with that. But, I mean, we've been talking about POF a little bit. Let's, um... Let's move on to it. Let's kind of let's, let's hit one of our last topics. Before we get to QA, and let's, let's, I, I kind of wanted to talk about how what we feel like, or what we believe, and this is pure opinions, I think, for a lot of this stuff, um, that PUF, you know, will answer, and what right. it might. So what do you think? What do you think it will give us, both lore-wise, either lore-wise or quality of life, mechanically speaking? Well, Either, either I, one of those categories. Well, I'm going to say maybe it'll answer going to the slight spoil the territory, but what happened to Ritlock when in the interruption of Part of Thorns? Like, why is, how, what happened to him during that time period in the mist in Part of Thorns? Yeah, I would like them to answer that too, and I think, I, I don't remember. Or, I'm almost positive they did say that that was going to get answered. I, mi I did miss a few dev streams because of, um, I haven't I had a chance to watch a few of the dev streams, but I, I do I almost want to say I remember them here saying that they will answer that question. Maybe they'll say what other legends does he have? Does he have more than just the regular standard rep hack, or does he have more? Yeah, that's a good question. Because one of the kind of, like I was and I know there's a few YouTubers out there that have their own theories and, and stuff like that, but the trailer just came out this week for POF and like we were one of the things that came up when who could at uh, guy have been oh, talking yeah. and you know one of the things that we thought of was maybe it was another legend that he might potentially have access to that we just don't have access to as revenants in the game yet. That's a possibility that yeah, yeah I never thought of that one I was stuck between Joko and another thing we're going Because if they introduce that it could be really interesting to the storytelling in the game because he could have access to legends that and get info to lore and stuff like that that and really easily possibility info of what's gonna happen what we can do in that scenario what what's gonna happen if you want you know say, say like he gets access to like prince Rurik, for example Ooh, right? that would actually be awesome uh so you think uh, ritlock this is i uh, another lore i'm gonna go another, another lore thing here i really do feel that because of some of the hints they made because of the fact that they introduced Horine. I think you're gonna meet Gleam, or at least find out what happened to him. That would be nice, because remember, what if I say from uh, one of the living story stuff? Or and let's let's, let's let's stay away from there. I just want oh, okay. I want to say that you know they did they hinted at him a hinted. little bit. Let's I'm not go. gonna say where it is. I will let the viewers see if they can figure out what hints they were. Uh, right. I will say that Gleam, because this is a Guild Wars 1 thing and some people may not know it, I will say that Gleam is Glint's first child that we know of. Mm -hmm. 
anyway. And it wasn't always confirmed that it was complete canon because it was a challenge mission in Guild Wars right. 1. It wasn't an actual story mission in that, Guild Wars 1. I was always like, uh, I was always wondering about that when I picked up the game too. I'm like, hmm. But you know, so if if he, I, I really do think that you're gonna you're gonna hear something about him in this one because of the thing. Especially um, where it's located. Uh, so I go back and forth a little bit. What, what else do you think that you know either they will uh, uh, hit on or maybe you know or won't hit? What on? I'm more intrigued on going from Nightfall, which is kind of one of my favorite campaigns. I said prophecies and factions. Uh, Joko, Hollow Joko. How do you? Well, when do you think he will be introduced in the story? What map do you think he might be introduced? Like, we only know that there's Ooh. only. I mean, they could they could do something really interesting if they introduce him in the Desolation, for example. Because oh. you know, remember you remember with the whole thing in, with the worms. The, the, uh, yeah. By so right. they could do something really interesting, like with him riding up on a Jadundu. I remember like that. as an intro, as an intro for him. So I mean, I would say like it, if I had a preference, and you know, I, if I, I would say do something like that. Um, but I think you're definitely going to meet him before the living story. Another, He's definitely going to be in the base game story for this one. Another thing, do you think he would be friend or foe? Or would he try to manipulate him? Um, knowing Joko, it's going to be whatever's best for him. Yeah. If him helping us helps him, mm -hmm. he'll help us. Right. Known from Guild Wars 1. But he may feel that he's been around for so long that he's grown his power so much that it won't affect them as much. It's very true. Uh, there are certain circumstances that I think that he can't avoid, though, and I think he will have to work with us. Um, especially in the trailer, you know, um, uh, the, I don't remember if this was the original trailer, the announcement trailer, or the trailer that came out this week. But I, I do remember them saying something like, we're going to have to make allies or something like I that. I do remember that. So my turn, and I really do, as much as I would really, really like them to answer who E is... That would be very nice. Yeah, I don't know, and I don't, I don't think there's enough... They haven't been enough hints, and the kind of story kind of went away from it for a while. So I don't think we're gonna get that answer. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that. No, oh, another thing about what it may answer. What do you think? Would it even that announce like gem variants of the mounts, like skins for the mount? Do you think that's even possible? Oh, I think that's definitely coming. I, I, that's I, obvious. I, I have did it with no a doubt in my mind they're gonna make some money off the mount somehow. Somehow. I one of, one of the things that I I don't think, and granted it's not a QOL release and there's not going to be a lot of quality of life stuff, but you know, one of the things that a lot of us were hoping for was some kind of key ring. God, tell me about it. Or at least the ability to deposit all these freaking keys that we have. Uh huh. I agree. I totally agree with you. And I mean, I just completely uh, skimmed over it, but you mentioned mounts, and I mean that's something people have been asking for for years and we so and we know that that will be answered that and actually i think from what we played in the, the betas I, I think they did a really good job on them they did they, they made them feel like it wasn't just a way to get around the world faster or it was something it that was you a needed to get around you know and, and and they can actually expand upon it because of the uh, just because of some of the um mechanics that they have around them too. Mm -hmm. they can they can build a few things on it so i think the fact that you, you're going to have to switch mounts to do specific things uh, it may actually make them really interesting other than just let me run around here fast. All right. I agree with you on that. Uh, anything else? I can't really think of anything uh, else right now. That it... What about Fractal Relics? Or did we already cover Fractal Relics? That was um, I kind of touched on it earlier because of the fact that I wish they would give us something. I don't think you're going to see it right off the back, though. Yeah, um, I agree. I do know that they said that now you mentioned it, I didn't say this earlier, but I do know that they said that there will not be giving us a way to um, convert fractal relics to gold. Which is a little disappointing considering Correct. there are some ways to do it with karma. There is kind of a way to convert fractal relics to gold right now. Mm -hmm. um, but it requires spending money on ascended uh, salvaging equipment. Right. Which isn't the cheapest thing, so it really, really cuts into your um, your profits. You raise that point there. So unless you're getting a lot of, and it's completely random, so unless you're getting a lot of uh, salvage kits from the T4s that you're running, um, you're probably going to have to be spending money, and, and it's really not the greatest way to convert, uh, gold, uh, convert to gold. Yeah, you raise that point. Uh, that's pretty much it. Shall we move on to Q&A, or...? 
Yeah, let's finish up with some Q&A. I mean, uh, we're kind of sparse right now in Q&A, unless you have some questions. Uh, that, uh, what specifically, I was going to go off and do this one real quick that we got from the at 12th Battalion on Twitter. Yeah. Um, who asked, uh, why is ANET forcing players to change classes with elite specs? And he also has a, a, a bit more to add, and it says original classes are not being improved and they're being ignored. That question came in... On Twitter. Uh, on Twitter. And I don't know if I completely agree with the fact that they're being ignored. Uh, we just had another patch that did touch on a few of them. Right. I do get the f get where they're going, though, where they feel like some people do feel like the original classes are going to be underpowered. Yeah. And that's by design? Yeah, they want you to, like, explore and have more freedom and try new things with the class that you're playing. But yes. The, um, there are some classes, there are some builds... That still work a little bit better, and these are few and far between. Uh, with straight vanilla specialization. Let's touch on Condi as, you, as an example. Condi is a, Condi is an example. I think a um, Ranger too. Condi Ranger is the other one. So Condi is kind of where the, those two fit. Build them up. The the thing about it is, I don't think you've seen the elite specific. I don't think people have seen enough of the system yet. And what potential the system. Yeah, the least specification system, I think, it will give you choice if they do it right, and this is what I'm worried about. Now, granted, I expect the new elite specs to come out a little bit overpowered to try and sell them, sell people on them, and of course, a little bit that in the fact that you know they're going to be a little bit overpowered because people haven't you know spent so much time with them that they know how to get every little bit of power out of them. So as the builds get better and all that stuff, you're probably going to see some nerfs to bring them back down to the level like, of everything else. Going off that, I can totally see Starberg getting a nerf for World PvP. Uh, Hollow Smith, maybe a damage nerf. Soul Beast, a total nerf for some of their abilities. But yeah, that's what I can see. But I don't see I don't see them doing that right away. No, I mean I, I think they're going to let the the meta settle a bit and figure out what people do with them and yeah, and then go off of that like they normally do. But I. If they do it right, they're going to try and make it to where... And they might not all be super powerful in all game modes, but I, if they do it right, you're going to see elite, spec elite specs for each class that are pretty powerful in the game modes that you want to choose, and you're going to have multiple options per class. So you're going to have some flexibility with your class. Right. And somebody said it, and it really does... Uh, one of our friends said it in the guild, and they said that they felt like it was, they just added nine classes to the game. Oh, uh, yeah. I remember that one. And and it really does, and I think that's a really good way to put it, because, I mean, in all actuality, okay, you've really got, and the way I look at the Elite Spec uh, system is that each character you create, like right now, going in the POF, will have two classes that they could potentially play, is the way that you could look at it. Good and point. I think that's I think that's kind of the way to look at the elite spec system is that it gives you the ability to switch your class enough to fulfill roles in different game modes. Right. How's it and going? Need, so like we talked, we touched on uh, warrior, for example. I don't see berserker going away in PVE. Oh, I can agree. Not with you. not from not from what I've seen, but uh, but spellbreaker is going to be really nice in the PVP world we world scene from what I've seen so far. And it's actually a little fun from what I've had with it. And uh, oh, there's gonna be, be people that are gonna play open, find open world builds in it and stuff like that. But the the people that are tweaking builds for things like raids, you know, I I don't see Berserker going away. Right, I agree with you. I mean, because of those burns, you know, I'm Berserker. I'm and the Berserker trait line itself gives you a torch for for more burning, and it gives you uh, some power ups to all those things. So I don't really see it going away. Like Berserk, the rage skills, all that stuff. And that's not a bad thing. It's just the fact that you won't be able to play Berserker. I mean, uh, sorry, you nope. won't be able to play Spellbreaker in PVE if that if that holds true. But it doesn't mean that Berserker is any less powerful if they if they balance everything right. Sure. I mean, for all we know, Condi could switch from being king to being least. For all we know, at least used. In the future. Yeah, I don't see that happening. Yeah, from I, don't. What I, I mean, you're right. Aina could do anything on come this Friday when it releases, but like, I really, from what I saw in some of the uh, Elite Specs uh, in the preview weekend, it really did look like they were embracing burning as the the high DPS condition damage. Build. Yes, I have noticed that. It is fun seeing those numbers, in my opinion, but 
Do you have any other questions? I, I mean, uh, I, am, or did you have anything to add to that? Because I pretty, pretty much rambled on that question. You kind of covered question. what my thoughts on it. I mean, I don't think they're gonna get gonna stop you from playing the main class. I mean, for example, you know I'm a warrior. I'm, I love NG. I can still make builds. I can make a scrapper variant. I can make a Condi scrapper for PvP. PV? No, not PvP. Condi scrapper for PVE. I can use Condi NG for raid or and warrior. I could like. Try to find a variant for Spellbreaker, or I can even play regular Warrior. It doesn't stop you from playing it. It just makes you try to find more variants that you can enjoy with. Maybe find your own niche. I mean, honestly, it, it kind of depends on what you're talking about, too, now that you say that. Because if I'm in open world, right, I don't really care. Like, you know, we've got guildies that want to run some crazy stuff in world, open world. Run whatever you want. Yeah, run whatever. You know, like, if you want to play a rifle warrior rifle ng because you want to stay far behind and don't want to get up close but you have friends that are like that like to play really tanky in open world great i mean none of that stuff is kind of meta in in raids and fractals but i mean if you're if you're in a group that is all friends and stuff like that and you want to run the raids a little bit of a different story because there's some dps, DPS checks in the raids themselves mm -hmm. but like fractals or dungeons or stuff like that where there's not super there's not re true dps checks then go do what you want. I mean, as long as you complete the content, right? I mean, a lot of it's about speed, too. And fractals, a lot of... Like, we talked a little bit about it earlier. Fractals, you know, some of that stuff of, of being a little bit elitist in, in the way that they're they're advertising their stuff. It's about speed. That's all it is. I mean, if you can complete a fractal with soldier's gear, for example, then run it with soldier's gear. Right. There's nothing stopping you. Know, you, you. It's just not go, you're not going to do it as fast as some of the people. But then again, for you, it might be just as fast because, you know, the pe the person playing Soldier's Gear is probably doing it for a reason. So Yeah, because maybe, who knows, maybe they don't have much confidence with their class or maybe something, they feel fun being the tank or feeling stronger or lasting longer. Who knows? Or maybe they can't survive without it. You know, if you can't survive Zerker Gear sets... Soldier's Gear probably is going to end up helping put more DPS out because you're going to be alive to actually do DPS. Mm -hmm. It's better to have live DPS than dead DPS. Did you have any other questions? I, I kind of want to move on. We've been talking about this one for a while. Uh, I have not received anything else. If you want a comedic question, why is there no bacon in Guild Wars? <laughs> but we're not going to answer really? that. Go kill some Warthogs and cook them up. There's your answer. There's no bacon, there's no bacon in Guild Wars? You can just cook them up by killing Warthogs. Don't, no, no, I don't want to kill Timon and Puma. We found them in game. We just found them in game. Hey, uh, that, hey, you <laughs> spoiled my stream. How could you? How would the, you? Uh, but actually, if you do have any questions, um, we will try and start doing streams, and uh, we'll be answering questions on the stream. We'll probably yeah. continue doing a video like this, edited style video. Correct. Probably once a year, if people really like it, we may get into doing it um, like monthly even for every yeah. big patch, maybe. Yeah. Just to just to see. Um, but definitely, if you got any questions, let us know. We'll do some Q and A's. Yeah, and my Twitter will be linked in the video, or in uh, Kozai's Twitter as well. If you want to hit us on there, you're free to talk to us about it. We'll happily add it to our list. Yeah, but given that, like I said, if anybody else has any questions, please give them to us. We'll, we'll throw out a video for you guys. Uh, but other than that, I will say goodbye and see you next time. I'll pass it off to Conan. All right, I'll see you next time, and I'm glad you sat around to watch this. It's so fun. All right, bye, guys. Bye, guys.